Bleeding Steel tells the story of a menstruating android who struggles to find acceptance, love, and feminine hygiene products made out of steel wool. No, it doesn't. Hey, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Frunzik McCurchin, and this is my review of Bleeding Steel. I already watched Kung Fu Yoga this year, so I don't know why either. Actually, I do know. My Armenian manager gave me no choice. I could either review this movie, or foster a pair of smuggled mouflon for a month until their new owner got out of prison. <laughs> what? Oh, allegedly. Sorry. So when Bleeding Steel finally got released, dumped, in Hong Kong, 72 hours before I could have waited for a DVD. I figured I may as well get it out of the way. And it's not as though the list of worst films of 2017 wasn't already long enough, but hey, there's always room for one more, right? Bleeding Steel would be a great date movie, because it starts sucking as soon as the lights go out. One of the associate producers was credited as Larry. Just Larry. One of the executive producers was J.C. Chan, proving that drug possession is a crime, but nepotistic money laundering isn't. I know, I know, allegedly. Sick tear. Jackie Chan plays a caring father to a daughter again, just like in The Foreigner. And his daughter dies at the beginning of the movie. Again. In the opening of the film, Jackie, okay, the stunt drivers, indulge in a little high-speed, unsafe, illegal driving through Beijing. But... He doesn't get caught. That may be because he's a member of the United Nations Special Forces. They wear these nifty vests. The vests and all the law enforcement vehicles in the movie are in English only because only foreigners commit crime in China. These UN Special Police are on the trail of a renegade band of foreign mutant super warriors who want to steal a bunch of cutting edge technology from a foreign biotech surgeon and create an army of Bioroids. No, really. I'm not sure if they'd be foreign bioroids, but that sounds painful. These cops would be better off trying to find whoever wrote this crime against cinema, or the people who said yes to these god awful outfits. Nothing says great movie like a Shanzai Darth Maul and a cheap copy of Celine from Underworld, I guess. I actually haven't seen any of those movies. So I may be getting the reference wrong, and if so, I apologize. But even so, anybody can see that nothing in Bleeding Steel is original. Like the downmarket Tron suits, or this utterly unforgivable Shrek ripoff. But there's so much wrong with this movie that it's, it's almost unfair to just pick on the wardrobe department. I'm not sure how I feel about seeing a six-year-old girl topless, even if it is on an operating table. But it's kind of similar to seeing a later iteration of the same daughter's cleavage in an oddly fan service kind of shot. Both of those things are just not right. But neither is having CGI this bad in 2017. But it's a science fiction movie, so you gotta have the effects, right? How do we really know, though, that it's a science fiction movie? Well, for one thing, the United Nations Special Forces are given free reign to operate in China and carry guns. That's fiction as f You know it's a science fiction movie because there's a bad Star Wars knockoff spaceship, and Jackie Chan cares about his daughter. Speaking of which, Jackie's character is old when this movie starts, and then the movie switches to 13 years later. His daughter has grown up and turned into another actress. Yet neither Jackie nor this woman have aged a day. That's not because of science, that's just bad filmmaking. Which is a shock, really, to both of us, since the other movie that Liu Zhang directed was 2012's Chrysanthemum to the Beast, which I thought was just the name of an Alan Holdsworth bootleg. But you learn something new every day, if you're lucky. I learned that Bleeding Steel is directed and written by Liu Zhang. Saves me a bullet. I learned that in certain places on Earth, the ocean looks remarkably water tanky. Sick. I learned that a lot of Australian women have Eastern European accents. It's time for put shrimp on Barbie. Kill moose and koala. 
I didn't learn the Chinese word for undercranking, but I learned that there must be one. I learned that cutting-edge laboratories on spaceships have huge vats of molten stuff right in the middle of the lab. Tell them, Thomas. Science. I learned that spaceships have lots of parachutes at the ready. Tandem parachutes at that. I learned that the most visible thing on any electronics device is the logo of the company that made it or the name of the app that's being shown. I learned that slow motion, which is often used to make action look better, can also make action scenes look worse. I didn't know that until now. I learned that a vehicle with tinted windows so dark they are visibly opaque cannot prevent Jackie Chan from seeing his daughter inside that vehicle. I learned that Jackie Chan obviously has no problem when his movie goes from attempted gang rape to slapstick comedy that would embarrass the Three Stooges in the space of uh, 30 seconds. I learned that it's totally just a coincidence that the vast majority of the time Jackie Chan has any kind of action scenes in this movie, he's wearing a mask of one kind or another such that you can't see his face. Jackie Chan does all his own stunts just like he owns all his own kids. But now I'm just being bitter. I learned that Audi makes cars for good guys and bad guys and everyone else in this movie. I learned that as a foreigner, I should be shouting everything I say. How new, fresh, and unexpected in a China movie. Every foreigner in this movie acts like a crack addict. I guess that's what we really look like to Chinese people. Or people making movies for the China market. Who knows? Not me. This movie is as tone deaf about Westerners and Western movies as Western movies are about Chinese people and Chinese movies. So I have to admit that on some level, we deserve it. And it is kind of enlightening, if only because you get to see the juxtaposition. That said, that doesn't make it all right. And it sure as hell doesn't make Bleeding Steel a good movie. Nothing could. It certainly doesn't make it any easier to sit through. At one point, there's supposed to be a dramatic moment to express the threat and menace and anger of one of the villains. This is done by showing her crumpling up a post-it note. How, how dare this group of young ruffian foreigners catcall our innocent young heroine as she walks through a drug-infested red light district populated by transsexual hookers and drug addicts. And of course that hooker went racist. She hates Chinese people. They all do. Uh, foreigners, not hookers. Or maybe that hooker saw this movie that she's in. Wait, uh, never mind. Bleeding Steel is obviously trying to do something, and it obviously doesn't know how to do it. But it certainly tries. It tries to be Star Wars and Transformers and a whole bunch of other movies, and it tries so hard that I think George Lucas and Michael Bay might call their lawyers. But for all that effort, Bleeding Steel fails miserably. It really does come off like the cinematic equivalent of those Chinese knockoff toys. The Sci-Fi Channel wouldn't buy this movie. They wouldn't even show it for free. Sharknado, take me away. Bleeding Steel is a terrible movie, but it has a worse epilogue than my colonoscopy. I was getting my bioroids checked, that's why. I think it would be obvious to Stevie Wonder that I didn't enjoy this movie, and it would also be obvious to Stevie Wonder that it's really not a good movie. Now, oddly enough, I would still kind of recommend that you watch it. I I'm not saying you should run right out and watch it in a cinema, but you should watch it when you get the chance, preferably on an airplane when it's essentially free and you can change the channel. However, because it's what I do when this movie gets released to home video, I'll update the description with a link where you could buy a copy. And as long as we're talking about money, let me indulge in my own cheap special effects and ask you to please click on my Patreon page because frankly, I could use the money, especially because I spent 85 Hong Kong dollars to watch this movie, and it really, really hurt me to do so. For just a couple of dollars a month, you can make an important difference in my life, and you could force me to watch more movies that I don't like. <laughs> if you enjoyed this review, please let me know, and if you didn't, let me know. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.